I'm so, t- you're okay, all right. All right, I want you to be healthy. All right, touch the person next to you. Say, stay healthy, stay healthy, stay healthy. All right, all right, so we want you to do that. All right, y'all ready for the word tonight? I said, are y'all ready for the word tonight? Come on, lift your Bibles. Let's make our confession of faith together. I'm in my year of more. God will do more in me. God will do more through me. God will do more for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Have your way. Get the glory tonight, God. Speak to us with strength and speak to us with power. And for that, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody, just clap your hands and give God a praise like you love him in the building and online. I said, give God a praise like you love him. Hallelujah. Grab a seat. Let's go to work. So our series this month is called Speak, Lord. And we've learned the seven ways that God speaks. And one of those ways is called logos, which is like Legos. And I like it because these are things that build. Pay attention. Logos is a Greek word, which means his voice in a verse, which means sometimes you're looking for God's voice, but his voice is actually in a verse. And it includes numbers, signs, wonders, and patterns. Say it with me. Numbers, signs, wonders, and patterns. Every number has a corresponding biblical meaning. For example... The number five is the biblical number of grace, favor, and supernatural. Four is the biblical number of creativity. Two is the biblical number of witness. One is the biblical number of unity. Twelve is the biblical number of government. Eleven is the biblical number of dysfunction. Ten is the biblical number of divine perfection. And watch me. Forty is the biblical number of testing and wilderness. Forty-one is the number some of y'all are in. You're about to exit your testing and your wilderness. 50 is the biblical number of jubilee. All of these are found in the scripture. Signs mean something. I taught you there were so many people on social media talking about, oh, the eclipse, oh, the eclipse, oh, what is it saying? I was like, oh, my God, I got to say something because the Bible says that these things are given to us for signs. What's a sign? It's pointing to something. It's not the thing. It's pointing to something. And I taught you what the eclipse meant. It's a sign. Um, Then wonders. Wonders are when something happens that when we look at it, it makes us wonder how in the world did this happen? It leaves us in awe of God. And I don't know about you. Watch me. I don't have to look very far to see a wonder. All I got to do is look at somebody close to me. All I got to do is look at somebody in the comments because it's a wonder how in the world they made it over and through the hell that was thrown at them. I wish I was in the building and online with some people where when you look back, you wonder how in the world did I make it through that? How did I get through that? How did I overcome that? Let me check the room. Are there any survivors in the building and online where you can say, I don't know how I made it. It's a wonder how I didn't go under. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, you are a wonder. And patterns and patterns. All of these things, their meaning is found in his logos or his written word. So for those of you that say, I want to get closer to God, it starts with his word. Because John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Which means to get closer to him, I got to get in his word. So I can't get closer to him and not get in his word. And this is why you have to pray for a hunger. Watch me, for the word. Watch me. I don't just need entertainment. I need the word. I don't just need to get excited. I need the word. I don't just need, watch me, I don't just need to uh, to have confirmation. I need a word that's going to give me information, impartation, direction, instruction, and correction. I don't just need to hear what I've heard. I need to hear something I've never heard so I can see and have what I've never had. And what I Come on, open up your mouth and say, I need a word. I need a word. So in understanding this, I taught you on Sunday um, that God speaks through the biblical feast. One of those things is a pattern. And the pattern that God set up is literally built into his calendar. And what's built into his calendar are these biblical feasts. At Harvest, we do not honor things like Advent. We don't honor things like Ash Wednesday. We don't honor things like that. Why? Uh, uh, Because those things aren't biblical. What is biblical uh, are the feasts. And the Hebrew or the biblical calendar, the calendar has four different starts. Everybody say four. four. In the comments online, you drop a four. Four different starts. Here's what I love about it. We associate that with the seasons, summer, winter, fall, spring. But the reality is, is that in the Hebrew calendar, there was a different start predicated upon the reason. Here's what I love about that. God says, every three months, I've built it into my pattern to give you a reset. I'll talk over here because y'all ain't shouting over here. Which means, which means God says, every three months, I need to do something to shake you, to make you realize that there's more left in you to do. And I'm so glad that, watch me, if you felt stuck in the first three, get excited because in these next three, it's about to be some sudden, fast, forward movement. 
With these four different starts, there are seven different major feasts that are in the scripture. Sometimes in the Bible, they're referred to as festivals. If you go to Leviticus 23 and 2, it's on the screen. It says, the feasts of the Lord, these are my feasts, which means God says, this is something that's important to me. So if it's important to him, who should it be important to? Us. So this message is called How to Honor the Biblical Feast. Let's go. First Samuel 2 and 30 says, those who honor me. What did God just call the feast? My feast. So those who honor me, if this is important to me, make it important to you. Those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me will be what? Will be cursed. Which means, what's a curse? It means it's empowerment to fail. Which means God says, if you choose to not honor what I tell you is important to me, something in your life is going to fail. But when you make it your business to honor what's important to me, I'm going to make sure, watch me, that I'm not going to send a person to honor you. Look at your screen. I will honor you. Which means God says, the word honor there is kabod sometimes in the Hebrew, which means God says, I'm going to put some weight behind you. I'm going to, watch me, I'm going to make people look at you, and when they look at you, they're going to say, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I got to do something better for you than I do for everybody else. We don't normally do it like this, but for you, we are about to hook you up. I wish you touch somebody and say, God's about to honor you. Now, I know that's crazy because most of the times we only think about honoring God. But what I love about him is God says, if you'll release it, I'm going to release it on you. If you'll release honor to me, I'm going to increase honor for you. Which means, watch me, don't worry about what, your, what people didn't do to honor you. God's about to honor you. Don't worry about what some of you parents, don't worry about your kids not honoring you. God says, I'm about to honor you. Don't worry about your boss not honoring you. I'm about to honor. Are you with me? All right, so watch me. What is a feast? What does this mean? It's when heaven interrupts. Pay attention. So during the feast, God's pattern is that I'm going to twice a year, during the spring feast and during the fall feast, I'm coming to interrupt your norm. So for every person where you got a lot of stuff, and wave at me if this is you in the building online, but hold on, let me finish it. In the building and online, if you got a lot of stuff that's like coming up and it's interrupting you, it's popping up in the middle of your day. You're like, where did this come from? Why am I distracted? Why am I losing focus? Can I tell you that's an announcement that heaven says it's interruption time. What is it referred to in the scripture? A holy convocation. Now, if you grew up old school Pentecostal convocation was when you went to church for seven days straight uh, all day. You had morning glory service, and then you had some afternoon morning service, and then you had an afternoon service, and then you had the pre-service service, and then you had service, and then you had the midnight musical service, and then you, then you had the morning glory, you know, and for seven days. Okay, but convocation actually means a meeting that God sets with his people. Now, our prayer, praise, and worship sets a meeting with God. During the feast, God says, I'm setting a meeting with you. Which means for every person that says, God, where you been? I'm here to tell you, in a few days, he's about to be like, I don't like the way some of y'all respond in this building. And like, God says, baby, I'm right. I'm, you, I'm about to show you exactly what I've been doing. I'm about to show you exactly what I've been working on. You are about to see God move in your favor. Please, please, let somebody say, he's about to show up. For you, he's about to show his hand. He's about to show you where he's been. He's about to show his hand. You, he's been quiet for a little while, but he's going to say, I was working on something for you. I was turning somebody's heart for you. I was making them retire because they're about to give it to you. <laughs> Let's go. It means, look at me, it means an open heaven. If you grew up in church, you would often hear people use this terminology, an open heaven, open heaven. And they would just kind of make it up. I just feel like we're under an open heaven. And the problem is you can feel what you want to feel. That don't mean nothing. During the feast, it's his pattern that I'm setting a meeting with my people and I'm opening heaven. What does that mean? An open heaven simply means there will be nothing, look at me, that's going to hinder there will be nothing that will impede. There will be nothing that will interfere. Can I prove it to you? Say, prove it, Bishop. I'm glad you asked me to do that because I have no problem doing it. When Jesus was at his Passover, you call it the Last Supper. That was actually the Passover Seder or the meal that they ate for the Passover uh, as observed in Hebrews. Pay attention. Look at me. What happened during the Passover? Since heaven was about to open, who had to go? Judas. You're not listening. 
which means for some of y'all, how do you know that heaven is open? Because God says, I got to get that mark away from you. I got to get that person away from you. I got to shut that friendship down. I got to shut that relationship down. I'm about to open heaven and I don't need anybody around that's going to impede or interfere or intercept with what I'm Lift your hands, open your mouth, say, open heaven over my life. Okay, can I go further? So that's Jesus. That's Jesus, his Passover. That's Jesus' Passover. Let's go to the institution of the Passover where the Passover is instituted with Moses. So what ends up happening? On that night, we're going to look at it. On that night, say, on that night. On that night, when it was finally time for them to come out of 430 years, it happened so fast Look at me. He told Moses, Moses, when you go to sleep, go to sleep with all your clothes on. He said, Moses, he said, Moses, I, I'm going to look at me. I'm going to have you looking crazy for a little bit. OK, I'm going to have you doing stuff that doesn't make sense to you right now. But that's because in the middle of the night, you're going to be sent for and Pharaoh is going to literally give you in one moment what hasn't been given in 430 years. So what are you trying to tell me, Bishop? During the spring feast, watch me, when heaven opens, this means there's been 430 years of resistance. I'll talk over here. There's been 430 years of interference. But during the feast, I move the interference out of the way. And whatever it is, it's going to come uninterrupted, it's going to come unblocked, and it's going to come unhindered. One more time, and we got to move on. Lift your hands over your mouth, say, open heaven over my life. Let's go. So there are three major fall feasts. You still here? Say, teach, man of God. There are three major fall feasts. The first is Rosh Hashanah. This is also known as the Feast of Trumpets. This is when the year changes over. So right now we're in 5784. Even the number we're in is prophetic. 2024, 5784. Five, grace, favor, supernatural. Seven, shalom. Eight, new beginning. Four, create. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's me. That's me. The number two, uh, the second feast in the fall is called Yom Kippur, which is known as the Day of Atonement. This is when heaven seals judgment concerning what the next 12 months will be. The third feast is known as the Feast of Tabernacles. This represented when the children of Israel, as they had to go from temporary place to temporary place, watch me, his presence was still with them. And I said this to you on Sunday, and I said it to you last Wednesday, I need to say it again. For some of you, stop thinking that because things aren't permanent that you don't have his presence. He's with you in your temporary. He's with you in your transition. He's with you on your temporary job. He's with you with that temporary friendship. He's with you in that. You might be catching a bus now. That's temporary. Y'all ain't gonna say that to it. You might be dealing with something now, but that's temporary. He's going to be with you in your tabernacle. Elbow somebody, please. Type it in the comment. Say, he's with me in my temporary. All right, let's go. Then you get to, then you get to, then you get to four major spring feasts. And these four major spring feasts represent these four words. You can see them uh, in gold behind me. Sudden, fast, forward, movement. Say it with me. Sudden, fast, forward, movement. Say it with me. Sudden, fast, forward, movement. Now, now listen carefully. Um, where are these found? In Leviticus chapter 23, verse number five. The first one is mentioned there, Passover. Um, when does the Passover come? We'll be, by the time next Wednesday hits, we'll be in what's known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which comes right after Passover. Now, say Passover. When does Passover come? Listen carefully. After 10 plagues, after 10 denials, after 10 disappointments, after 10 no's, after 10 delays, after 10 why me's, then sudden, fast, forward, movement. Then what? Sudden, fast, forward movement then what sudden fast forward movement one more again sudden fast forward movement now why 10 say why 10 because 10 i told you a minute ago is the number of divine perfection so he said moses i need you to go through these 10 no's 10 denials 10 disappointments 10 why me's 10 delays because this is the process of me perfecting you moses Moses, you're about to go from leading sheep to leading two million people. Okay. 
let me, I'm gonna say it another way. Say, 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 just, just go with me. Say, let's go, Bishop. Let's go, Bishop. You were leading sheep, which made you thousands of dollars. You are about to be sitting the top of a corporation of millions. That's a, I don't like the way some of y'all looking at me. That's about to take you to a whole nother income bracket. So Moses, if you can't deal with the pressure of thousands, millions is going to kill you. So I let you go through some denials. I let you go through some frustration. I let you go through some disappointment because I need to get you ready for what I'm about to put in your hands. I need you to find three people that are excited around you online. Stretch your hand towards me. Touch the hand. Say something big's about to hit your hand. Three people touch them. Something big. Something Something big is about to hit your hand. Something big is about to hit your hand. It's going to blow your mind. Bigger than what you asked for. Bigger than what you thought you could do. Bigger than what you thought you could handle. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be big. It's going to be big. It's going to be. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Now. Now. Say, teach man of God. Moses was doing what God told him to do. And if you've been watching prayer and the pop-ups, I talked about this, but I need to say it in Bible study tonight. Listen carefully. Is that God sent Moses to do this. So he, he sends him to do this. God plays chess with himself. He sent Moses to do it. Then he gets on the other side of the chessboard. And the Bible says, say the Bible says, he hardens Pharaoh's heart. Which suggests that Pharaoh was going to let him go. But God said, that'll be too easy. And if he gets it easy, he won't appreciate it. If he gets it too easy, he ain't going to protect it. Okay, y'all ain't going to say that. If you've ever had to fight to get something, you'll fight like heaven, hell, and earth to let somebody take it from you. So he said, Moses, you're about to fight for this. Because when you get this, you ain't going to let this. Let me ask the mature people in the building and online who can thank God for what you had to fight for? Who can thank God for what you had to struggle for? Who can thank God for what was not easy? <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. So God, so God hardens his heart. Which means, if, if, look at me, it means Pharaoh's heart wasn't hardened. I'll talk over here because y'all don't talk over here. If God had to harden his heart, this means his heart wasn't hardened. Which means God, look at me, I'm about to say something that's about to rock your world. It's, be like, it's about to be like Wanda from In Living Color. I can't even do it. I can't even do it. Okay. Can you do it? You ready? You ready? You ready? God made them act like that with you. God made them not pay you back. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. God made them ghost you. God made your kids act a fool with you to make you finally stop living your life through your kids and go get your life together. What do you mean, Bishop? What do you mean? What if God made them fire you? And you sitting here talking about vengeance is mine, says the Lord. God said, do you think that job is the best I can do? Because if you think that's the best I can do, you're insulting me. The cattle is mine. The... I need you to elbow somebody on fire close to you and slap them a high five. Tell them, say, God did that. That wasn't even the devil. That wasn't even the devil. That wasn't even the devil. This is why I ain't mad about it. This is why I'm not upset about it. This is why I'm not tripping about it. Because devil, you ain't even got that kind of power. This was God. God hardened it. Pharaoh's, which means his heart wasn't hardened. What does that phrase mean, harden his heart? That means he made him cruel. He made him against them. He made them say no. Some of y'all are like, God, why is this happening? 
And look at me. I'm going I'm to come down on your road. Say, teach man of God. And your fasting didn't change it. And your praying didn't change it. And your sowing didn't change it. And some of you are like, it's not working. It's not that it's not working. It's that you don't have the power to rebuke God. I don't like the way some of y'all are talking. This is, you're like, prayer ain't working. Oh, it worked. It worked. The issue is, you can't pray against God. It worked. You just can't stop the Lord. Are you still here? Are you still here? God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Somebody say, God did it. Because he said, Moses, I need you to go through this process for me to perfect you. I'm going to make you better. I'm going to make you wiser. I'm going to make you stronger. I need to show you how to be a leader. Because these people, you have to deal with two million people. And Moses, these people will punk you if you're weak. So, so you're going to have to be strong. You, 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 watch me. You're going to have to be a bulldog. He said, and Moses, I'm building up your perseverance. Because the old you would quit after two no's. But the new you just keeps getting back up again and saying, I guess I'll try it again. The, the evolved you says, well, this is my year more. So if that ain't my door, there must be another door. I ain't tripping over this. I ain't crying over this. You don't want to be with me? Baby, bye. You don't want to be my friend? Baby, bye. There must be more than this. So... So here we get to the Passover, Exodus chapter 12. I'm almost done. Exodus chapter 12, verse 11. God tells Moses, while he sleep, be fully dressed. While he sleep. In other words, Moses, keep, and I want you to think about this. They're in Egypt. Translation, hot. It's, it's so hot, for those of you who grew up in the South, in the South, it'd be so hot in the summer. <laughs> We used to have one of them air conditioners you put in the window and you try to sleep right up under that. Wave at me if you know. Because it was hot. And the moment you leave that living room to go into another room, you lost about 40 pounds. Like, oh my God. You get what I'm saying? All right. Be fully dressed. In other words, I'm about to make it hot. Look at me. You're going to be uncomfortable. Right before the Passover, you're going to be uncomfortable. This isn't going to be comfortable. This is not going to be comfortable. Is there anybody in the building or online beside me? Where well, there's some areas of your life, you're like, this is not comfortable. Be fully dressed. Not only have all your clothes on, be uncomfortable. Wear your sandals. Have your shoes on in the bed. In other words, not only are you going to be uncomfortable, it's about to get dirty in places it's not normally dirty. Say it another way. You're about to have challenges in areas that normally aren't challenges for you. It's normally never a challenge for you to forgive, but all of a sudden lately it's been difficult. Y'all ain't gonna sit up. It's normally not a challenge for you to focus, but every time you sit down and look at the computer, it takes you 30 minutes just to figure out what you're trying to do. Then he says, carry your walking stick. All of this in the bed. Fully dressed, uncomfortable, hot. Wear your, watch me, wear your sandals. It's about to get dirty in places it doesn't normally get because you're about to bring that dirt off them sandals into this bed. Then carry your walking stick. In other words, now really it means shepherd's staff for him, but just to illustrate it, because he, he, he carried that. Um, remember his staff where he threw it down it turned into a serpent, consumed Pharaoh. Okay, you got it? Y'all with me? All right, he says, carry your walking stick. In other words, I'm going to have, look at me, I'm going to have your hands really full. So even when you're sleeping, you're still thinking about work. Ah! Okay, even when you're sleeping, you're still thinking about what you got to do. So your rest hasn't really been rest lately because every time you go to sleep, you're still thinking about what you got to do. Am I talking to anybody in the building or all that? Uncomfortable, dirt, challenges where there's not normally challenges. Watch me. You're carrying your walking stick. I'm going to keep your hands full. Look at what he says. Carry your walking stick in your hand. So he says, sleep with this in your hand. 
Translation, have your laptop in the bed. Am I talking to anybody? And you're like, can't I just leave it over there? Can't I just rest? Touch your neighbor, say, nope. S -t Tell them, say, because what you prayed for is about to show up. Come on here, y'all. Tell somebody, say, nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Because <laughs> what you prayed for is about to show up. So then for the Passover meal, he tells them, you're going to eat the meal with urgency. So what was the Passover meal? It literally uh, was uh, what's called a Passover Seder. So he said, you're going to eat this meal, and you're going to eat it with urgency, for this is the Lord's Passover. Say urgency. urgency. Have you ever noticed how you have a lot of deadlines on you lately? <laughs> Who beside me lately? You've been like, God, don't. I've been working all day, and I, the list just as long now as it was when I started this morning. <laughs> he can't run. He walking. <laughs> Y'all ready? Touch the neighbor. Say urgency. In other words, everything is urgent lately. <laughs> Look, hold on, let me run for this. <laughs> Say all of this right before Passover. Verse 13. The blood on your doorpost will serve as a sign. So he says you need to slaughter a lamb and then take that blood and put it over the doorpost of your home. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you. Verse 17. I will remind you that I brought you and your forces out of Egypt. Forces there in Hebrew, it means mental and moral strength, power, and reorganize. Look at me. He says, Moses, for these 430 years and during these 10 no's, I was building your mental strength. Let's go. I was building your moral strength. What's mental strength? I need you to just, okay, everybody look at me. I don't need you, to, I need you not to be offended right through here. Okay? So when I say this, I mean one that just gives up easily, one that, 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 that gives up easily, okay? All right, just touch your neighbor. Say, I rebuke. I rebuke. For those of you online, stretch your hands towards me. Say, I rebuke, I rebuke. every ounce every of punk in you. When I say that, it means you give up too easy. See, many of you, watch me. Here's where your warfare is, right here. You tired because you've been fighting with you. Am I going to do it? Am I not going to do it? I can give it this. I can give it that. I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Where am I going to go? So you've been dancing all day with yourself. So then by the time you're ready to do something, now you procrastinate and put it off to tomorrow to only do the dance again the next day. He says, I've been building your mental strength and your moral strength. What is this? Your ability to say no to what you need to say no to and say yes to what you need to say yes to. So he says, this 430 years, I needed to lock a yes in you where there needed to be yes, but I needed to get a no in you where there needed to be a no. He says, but then I've been giving you power. Shout power. power. He said, listen, y'all remember uh, that song, I Got the Power? It's getting, it's getting, it's getting, yeah, 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 I got it, okay. <laughs> That's all I remember, too. Ain't it an O in there somewhere? I don't remember how it goes, though. That's okay. That's okay. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. Say, I have power. I didn't know I had until I was forced to find it. You didn't know you could start a business until they fired you. Ah! You didn't know you could survive without a man until you did it without one. You didn't know you could survive without a wife until you did it without one. You didn't know that you could survive without the job you thought you needed until you had to. You didn't know that you could bounce back from betrayal until you had to. You didn't know the power you had until you had to find it. Lift your hands, open your mouth, say, I got power. Verse 31. Translation, Monday night. <laughs> That's when the Passover begins. Say, this is the season. Now, just, I want you to get this. Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron during the night. Look at me. Every other time when they went, they went to him. 
Pharaoh, would you please let God's people go? Thus says the Lord God of Israel. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Thus says, Pharaoh's like, nope. This time, touch somebody, say this time. Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron. So what does this represent for you? There's about to be a reversal. Reverse. I need you to prophesy with your hands. Do it just like I did it. There's about to be a reversal. Why? You were chasing that. That thing about to chase you. They said they weren't going to take your offer. Now they're going to chase you to try to make you. Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron during the night. Say, say an unexpected time. So now we understand why God told him, to, you're going to have to be uncomfortable. Things are going to be, there's going to be some challenges, but they're not normally challenges. I need you to have your hands full. I need you to go to sleep with all your clothes on, Moses, because I'm about to do something you don't know nothing about. And if you're not ready, it's going to take you too long to get ready. So I'm keeping you ready because what you prayed for is about to show up. Watch me. And it's going to happen so fast. You're not going to have time to pray and think. You need to already know his will so you can just simply say, I was waiting on the call. I was waiting on the email. I was waiting on the text. I'm ready for this. Come on, y'all. I'm almost done. Touch somebody close to you and just say, you ready for this? Now, why is this significant? Because normally the king's business would wait until the next day. So I'm about to do this. Look at me. Look at me. Outside of business hours. This ain't going to be during business hours. I'm going to do this for you. And I'm going to do this for you. Watch me at night. Pharaoh says, get out, he ordered. We've been asking you to let us out. So every contract, uh-oh, every deal, every agreement, everything that's trying to lock you to hold you to something that's not good for your future. I pray God let you get out of it. I need you to lift your hands and open up your mouth and say, this is my exodus. Come on, in the building and the line, say, this is my exodus. They were sent for Moses and they were doing that. I got to finish. Get out, he ordered. Go worship the Lord as you have requested. Verse 32. Take your flocks and your herds as you have said. Now pay attention. They were slaves. They didn't own uh, 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 flocks. And herds. They didn't own this, which means in, in verse 32, Pharaoh transfers ownership. See, it happened so fast you missed it. It happened. In other words, in verse 32, Pharaoh said, I'm just going to give it to you. No, 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 no. You're not listening. You're not listening. You're not listening. Because for some of y'all, you, you, you're like, man, I. God, I want this, I want this, I'm praying for this, I'm praying for this, I'm praying for this. God says, I'm, I'm just going to have the ownership signed over. Prophesy with your hands like somebody signing a deed to transfer it to you. Prophesy with your hands like somebody signing over and quit claiming a property to you. <laughs> Sounded like somebody signing a check that was to them over to you. Say divine transfers are coming to me. Verse 35. This is the Passover. The people of Israel did as Moses had instructed. They asked the Egyptians for clothing, for articles of silver and of gold. Look at me, verse 36. The Lord caused the Egyptians. Let's stop right here. I'm, I'm, I'm for real, just about done. The Lord, say the Lord, the Lord. caused, say caused, oh. the Egyptians to look favorably on the Israelites. And they gave the Israelites, you read it. Okay, let me, can I get in your business? For some of you, it's been very difficult for you to pray outside of prayer times. Because the enemy has been trying to shut your tongue down so you wouldn't ask for anything. Because he knew when Passover came, you were going to get exactly 
This is why for some of you, you literally, you've been like, I don't know why it's been such a struggle. Who am I talking to? I don't know why it's been so difficult. I don't know why I've been riding my car silent instead of praying. Why I've been in my house silent instead of praying. I pray God open up your mouth and loose your tongue so that you would begin to pray and what you pray for you're about to possess. What you worship for you're about to walk in. What you've sown for you are about to see. God lock prayer in us. Lock prayer in us. Come on, Wednesday. Lift your hands in the building and online. Say, God, lock prayer in me. You ready? Some of you, you just, your, your prayers have been very generic. They've been very, they've been, they've been very, they've been very cornflaky. These ain't been frosted flakes. These been corn flakes with sugar coating. This is the bag cereal. And it does not taste the same. I've already taught you this. Read your Bibles. You ready? Let me tell you why it's been difficult. Let me tell you why. It's because the enemy knew that during this time, the feasts are about to begin. Heaven's about to open. And if you don't have an order placed, you won't get an order. So you'll go through another feast season excited without possessing. You'll go through another feast season excited but not actually executing. You'll go through another feast season and you'll get out of it and say, well, praise the Lord, maybe next time. I don't know who this is for, but I heard the Lord loud and clear. He said, this ain't going to happen in fall. This is about to happen for you in the spring feast. If you think I'm talking to you, I would release a praise right there. If I'm not, sit there and say nothing. But if I'm talking to you, I can't wait until September. I can't wait until October. I need to see it now. I need to see it now. Let's go. Y'all still here? Okay, I gotta go. I gotta go. Say, teach man of God. Leviticus 23, 6. This is Passover. Immediately following Passover, we stay, we go into the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because when they were eating this meal, they had to exit so quickly, the bread didn't have time to rise. You still with me? Okay, now, in, the, in, 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 in New Testament, British New Testament, um, Jesus is our unleavened bread. Because, look at me, say, say, say leaven. During the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they had to move so quickly the bread didn't have time to rise. Which, in other words, it means there's some things you're trying to wait on. And God says, I'm going to make it so, watch me, what you've been waiting on, it's been an excuse. So I'm about to remove your excuse. You've been saying, well, I can't do this until I get this. And God says, nope, we're going to remove your leaven. Look at me. Leaven means error. Look at the screen. It, so during this time, how do we honor the feast? This is when we self-reflect and self-correct. Say, God, show me me. So I can change quickly. So let me tell you why some of you have been extra irritated lately. Am I, am I not talking? Okay. Let me tell you why little stuff has been driving you up the wall. And you look back and you're like, what is up with me? It's because sometimes the only way for you to see it is he has to put pressure on it. So he'll push you. Would you come real quick? Come, come, come. He'll put pressure on you. And he says, the only way I can get you to see that your shoulder is hurting is I got to put some pressure. Now, you got you to gotta act like it's hurting. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay. No, I know, but act like it is hurting. No. Okay. 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 All right. Rewind. Run the scene again. Okay. God says, I need to put pressure on things. So you can see what you need to fix. Because without pressure on it, you think it's fine. I remember, I remember, y'all know, I do, I, I'm all in exercise and all in that. And so I do about 10 to 15 miles as much as I can. And when the weather gets good, oh, I'm, I'm out there all the time. You understand? Uh, listen, you may catch me anywhere. You'll you be like, I saw Bishop, he was in Boulder. Walked all the way downtown Denver. Like, that probably was me. That probably was me. Hey. All right, well, not that far. But okay, but the point is, so I was going, and then I, one day I was going back, and then my foot, uh, my foot, I had a pain. Let me tell you something. 
I was like, Jesus, if I got to live with this pain, Lord, come get me now. I've never had a pain like that before. And I was three miles away from my home, and we had to do a Saturday night, what do we call it? You used to call it devotion or something. So I had to hurry up and get back. I'm way away from my home, and I'm like, oh, God. And then I'm doing this. This ain't working. So then I finally get to a scooter. And when I'm on the little scooter, every little bump, I'm like, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. And I'm like, I got to hurry up and get home. So I got home. I had to put, that, put my foot up on the thing. But watch me. And then when I, look at me. When I put my foot up, I was like, okay, cool. It's over. I didn't realize that it was still hurting until I put pressure. Okay. And when I put pressure on it, I was like, this is, this something needs to change. <laughs> so for some of you, there's areas God's putting pressure on you because he's saying this needs to change. Open your mouth, lift up your voice and say something's about to change in me. Y'all ready? I said, are y'all ready? So during this Feast of Unleavened Bread, immediately following Passover, which begins for us as the time of this message next Monday, we're self-reflecting, we're self-correcting. How do we kick that off? A fast. That's how we kick that off. At the eve of the Passover. And what does a fast do? It's going to make you see you. Because you're going to see your real emotions when you ain't ate. If you're patient, we're going to see it. If you're impatient, we're going to see it. Because them, them calls going to be a little different. Speak. Baby, just text me because I'm just not in the mood right now. Just. <laughs> okay. All right, look at Leviticus 23.7. You should do no customary work on him. So, so not only do we say self-reflect, self-correct, fast. Here's the next thing we do. Here's how we honor the feast. What customs do you need to change? What are the things, and this is part of self-reflecting and self-correcting. God says, change your customs. Um, there are some things that God says, you've been doing it a certain way, and you think that's the only way it can be done. But sometimes you're mad at something you have the power to change. You're angry at something you got the power to change. There's stuff, I'll be like, God, da, da, da. he said, change it. One of, my favorite, one of my favorite movies is Coming to America, the original. Anyone else? Not, not the new one. Um, and so, um, so in the original, they, uh, A.L. Leon and, 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 and the king, they in the, they in the, back, of the back of the car. And, and the king says, it is tradition. Who am I to change it? You know what A.L. Leon says? I thought you were the king. In other words, during the feast, the stuff you've been complaining about, God's going to be like, I thought you had the power to change him. I thought you were the king. I thought you, that's what you call yourself on social media. That's what you call your little friends. That's what you call, hey, queen, hey, king. I, I thought that's what you were. It's Bible, Revelation 5.10, and I make you kings and priests. God says, change it. I really want to do some different kind of work. Have you been looking for different kind of work? Or just been sitting up complaining every day you get up? Life is too precious for you to be sitting up and miserable about where you got to go, who you got to be with. Where... Baby, if it's miserable, we're about to bust a move. I need you to touch three people and say it's time for you to bust a move. I'm not living in misery. I'm, not li I'm about to close right through here. <laughs> But I'm not living in misery. I'm about to bust a move. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. Verse 8. Verse 8. Self-reflect. Self-correct. Fast. What customs need to change. Verse 8. You shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. So during the feast, we sow sacrificially. You've heard me teaching about that. We sow sacrificially. Say we sow. Sacrificially. Let's go. Say it with me. Say we sow. Sacrificially. Okay, this is part of what we do during the feast. If you haven't already gotten that seed in the ground, get it in the ground. One year, I gave one amount. He was like, that's cute. I'm just telling you what happened to me. This is my story. He's like, that's cute. He said, son, what you asked me for, he said, don't you ever fight with me about no money. 
He said, because what you asked me for, he says, is that what you asked me for? I said, no, sir. He says, so then I'm going to need that up off of you. Because if that's not enough to meet your need, that's not your harvest, that's your seed. Okay. Verse 10, bring the sheaf of the first fruits. That's unleavened bread. Um, this is the resurrection. Uh, this is actually the real resurrection day, the day Jesus got up. He's our first fruit. Verse 12, you shall offer a male lamb. That's Jesus. And then verse 16, this is the fourth of the feast. Fifty days after Passover is the feast of Pentecost, also known as the feast of weeks. We'll get into the other ones later. Verse 22, last way that we honor the feast. Nor shall you gather any gleaning from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Gleaning was something that could be harvested, but it was better given away. You see with me? So last way we honor the fast is this. You're going to give away what you can give away. Here's your last shout and we going out. Because you're about to make room. You're about to make room. You're about to make room. You're about to make room for more. I need you to touch somebody close to you. I'm done Wednesday. Say, you're about to give away some stuff. Say, it's called spring cleaning. Because you're about to make room for some more. Say, give away your old clothes. You're about to get some new ones. Say, give away your old stuff. You're about to get some new stuff. Let go of that. You about to get this. Talk to me, y'all. Say, let go of that. Because I'm about to get this. In Jesus' name. On three, holler more and put a praise behind it. And we're done. One, two, three, more. Put a praise behind it. Glory. Come on, Los Angeles. Come on, Indiana. Come on, Miami. Come on. Dallas, come on Chicago, come on Prague, come on South Africa, shout more on your feet, everybody in the building and no line. So what do you need to give away? You have your answer. <laughs> you need to go home. There's a lot of stuff you need to say, I don't need that. 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 And for some of you, you gotta hear me. You you have a you have a you have an attachment to things because of how hard you had to work to get them. But if you'll release it, you ain't wore that dress since 84. Ma'am. Sir, you have not been able to fit that since you played wide receiver in 79. I'm going to need you to let that go. Your foot is never going to foot in that shoe again. You just got him sitting in there like, oh, look at him. You're about to be a blessing to somebody else. And here's what we're going to do. When you bless, when you send it, when you do all of that, um, I want to encourage you. I want to see how much we can give away together. So let's do it together. So whatever you give away, however many articles of clothing, shoes. I don't know who, this is the craziest thing. I just heard the Lord. Those orange pots. <laughs> I got the Holy Ghost. I got whoever that's for whatever you give away I want you to just you just email it in to the church whatever, however much it was I want to see how much we can give away together during these feasts okay Bishop when should I do it you should do it right away because if you wait you're going to hold on to that stuff you're going to look at that jacket eight times well you know if I take it to the tailor you're going to spend more getting that, docket, that jacket tailored than the jacket costs. I remember when the Lord had me to do this years and years ago. It was during the fall feast, and we were going into Thanksgiving. And uh, I had a very practical reason because I, I had lost, at that time, 90-some-odd pounds. And so he said, son, give it all away. I said, Lord, all of it? 
I was driving down Colorado Boulevard, y'all. And they used to have a consignment shop by. And I called one of my people. I said, call these people and, and see what they can. They got to work a deal. I said, I'm not just going to give this stuff away. And the Holy Ghost said, give it away. He said, and if you give it away, I will make sure that you never, ever have to even think about clothes again. So that November, every suit, because I couldn't fit it no more. My shoes, I didn't realize how much, you know, juiciness we carry in our feet. All my shoes, all my suits, all my clothes. Y'all, look at me. This was 2013. I had to start over with one outfit as a grown man. Everything. Do you understand when I say everything? Okay. Everything had to, everything. He said, son, to start over. So I said, okay. So I literally had one outfit in my closet. One outfit. But then something started happening. Touch your neighbor and say, same thing's about to happen for you. Then all of a sudden, brands and people started sending stuff. Look at me. I have not, and I'm just telling you to brag on God, every week, every day, something comes in the mail. Many times from companies, I don't know who they are, who they even are. You're not saying that to me. You're not saying that to me. People will, will email and say, people, we don't, people I don't even know. They'll be like, what's Bishop size? They'll sit, look at me. Since 2013, that's 11 years. Say, Lord, Lord I, want I want more. more. Since 2013, I have not worried. I have not been concerned. Brands send me people. At, people be like, where you get that from? Where you get that from? It was a gift. <laughs> where you get that from? It was a gift. I don't look at me. I don't ask anybody for it. My giving puts a demand on it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, Lord, sudden, fast, forward, movement is mine. In Jesus' name. Can you just bow your heads and close your eyes for just a second? If you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord or be sure. Tonight's your night. Secondly, if you're giving your life to the Lord, you've not been faithful to him. Tonight's your night to recommit yourself to the Lord and come back to him. And then finally, if you're like, Mr. Foreman, I, I don't really know where things stand with God, but I want to be shown off sure tonight, wherever you're at, in the building and online, on the count of three, you're going to just simply slip your hand up. Online, you'll do the hand of emoji, just say it's me. No guilt. No condemnation, no shame. God loves you with an unconditional love. You're here in the building or online on purpose. This is not an accident. One, three, God's coming to get you. One, two, three, that's you hand up in the building. Online, do the hand wave emoji, say it's me. You become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord or be sure. Come on church, I need to hear you a little bit better than that right there. Everybody pray this with me. Say, Father, thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for your love for me. I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that you are my Lord and my Savior. Give me the grace and be a faithful Christian from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, you just prayed that prayer. Scan the QR code or text Harvest to 55498. Enter the option for salvation. We're going to shoot you a message right away to show you how to make Christianity your lifestyle, not just a hobby. Some of you are saved, but you don't have a shepherd. And you know I'm your shepherd because sheep know the voice of their shepherd. It's a spiritual connection. We never have to meet. We never have to talk. It's spiritual. God connects us spiritually, and it's bigger than a zip code, right? You could be in New York. You could be in Florida. You could be in South Africa. For those of you who are on the pop-ups, you get to see a lot of the places that people are. They're all over. I met a harvester from Sri Lanka a couple of months ago. It was amazing. We were doing a master class, and they were like, I got up. I waited to 3 a.m. just to be on a master class. I said, God, dog, that's dedication. I said, send that spirit over to Denver. Listen. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. Anyway, no. <laughs> I'm just messing. I'm just messing. I love y'all. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. But we'd love for you to be a part of the Harvest family. Text Harvest to 554 or scan the QR code. Listen, if you came in late, you weren't able to give, get your giving ready. If you want to sow to seal with me, we're going to do that. What is sow to seal? When a word speaks life into you, uh, you, you sow into it. Where's that at in the Bible, Bishop? 
first samuel chapter number nine when samuel the man of god spoke life into saul he sold into it what's the seed 23 dollars and 50 cents you can double that if you want to what's that for leviticus 23 and 5 where the passover is instituted leviticus 23 and 5 that's the seed i just gave it through text to give um guys we're coming up on two years that the lord has had me do that um, I never did that before May of 2022. And when I started doing it, I said, Lord, every service, every prayer, every time, he says, son, I'm going to have you put a demand for seed because I'm going to release. And he said, and the people connected to you, there's going to be something very significant because people connected to you, their finances are never going to be the same. He said, and for some of them, they're ready for major upgrades, major increases. He said, for some of them, they need major reorganization. So for some of you that even feel like you're kind of in a little dip, that dip is just your reorg. Sometimes you won't learn how to get things right until he forces you to do it with less than what you're used to. And then once he forces you to do it with less than what you're used to, then all of a sudden he can trust you with more. My whole first book, um, Making Money Moves, is about that. About how do you be a faithful giver and then go through a dip. Because I went through a dip. And I said, God, how did I go through a dip like this? How did this industry collapse? He said, I'm going to teach you some lessons in the valley that I couldn't teach you on the mountain. And he said, I'm going to teach you how to drop expenses. I'm going to teach you how to do things debt free. I'm going to teach you how to not worry about impressing people that ain't paying for nothing. I'm going to teach you how to all the, I'm going to teach you how to leverage credit. I'm going to, te to teach you how to do all those things. And he taught me all of that, uh, a lot of that in a valley. And, uh, and so for those of you that feel like you're in a dip, that's okay. You're connected to an anointing that that dip is temporary. Come on. Just touch somebody close to you and say, money is not going to be your issue. How can you give that cash app? Dollar sign, Bishop Form with the number two. PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, Givelify. That's available. Hello at harvestchurch.church. You can mail it to P.O. Box 441004, Aurora, Colorado, 844. Give a five, that's available too. Or you can use stocks, crypto, and donor advanced funds, that's available. Just scan that QR code. Or the way I used to give, text to give. Text them out to 84321. Tap or enter Harvest Church. And when you see the V, that's where you want to be. All right? Don't forget our pop ups tomorrow. Sunday's going to be amazing. I'm so excited about this word. Normally, God speaks to me because I pray um, very early about what the word it will be. And to be, and to be completely transparent, this particular week, I, I was like, God, I know where I'm at subject wise. I said, but you have not been very clear about what I'm supposed to say on Sunday. What what is I'm not supposed to say at this? And immediately following prayer, he was like, bam, that's it. I said, yes, sir. So I wouldn't miss Sunday if I was you. Lift your giving to the Lord in the building and online. Can you smile at somebody close to you? Just say, I'm so glad to do life with you. You don't have to know them. It's okay. It's all right. Look at the other person say, I'm excited about your future. And just go to a third person. Only somebody that looks excited. Online, you stretch your hands towards me if there's nobody there with you. Just say, I'm excited for you. Because by this time next week, you'll have your first spring feast testimony. Hallelujah. Come on, lift to give it to the Lord. Say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm a faithful giver. Therefore, I flourish. All things work together for my good. In Jesus' name, amen. Bastards are passing here at Grape Street. Um, uh, for those of you online, you can use one of the online giving methods. You say, Bishop, I don't have the 2350. Get as close as you can to it or just put those numbers in what you sow. But I encourage you to get a seed in the ground. And what's the name of this seed? Very simply, Passover. That's the name of this seed. Let's do it together, everybody. Love God, love peoples, and love life. I'll be down front to meet and greet you in just a few moments. On your way out, hug four people and just say, I can't wait to hear your testimony. Shalom to you.